welcome back everybody to the second day of the DreamHack Warcraft 3 Championship where we are getting ready for the upper bracket match of Group D. We already saw a bit of happy, but everyone wants a little more of happy. I am joined by Todd and Neo over here on the desk. And Neo, I only have one question. I've heard about this struggle that happy is supposed to have against Orc. Now, I don't believe it, but sell me on it. People say that the last uh, big offline event was WGL Winter. He was in the grand final and he was defeated by Lin. That obviously can happen, but uh, you know, we don't really know how good Happy is versus Orc because there's no real good Orc uh, on that level in Europe, so we don't see him in that competition. In the War 3 Champions Finals, the last one, he faced Focus on uneven ping, really, mm -hmm. and it was a very, very close 3 to 2 series, so maybe there is some truth to that. So, what you're telling me is that I need to play a couple letter games. Game so you can practice again. <laughs> Definitely. Next, <laughs> next, next dream hack you're in, Kev. All right, let's do it. Obviously, we want to hear from you guys at home who you think is going to win this series. Hashtag HEP for happy and hashtag SOI for sewing. That's going to be not the first on that first work we're going to see because obviously we had Hitman against x -Lord, but I feel like it's a matchup we haven't seen a whole lot yet, Todd. Are you fond of it? Yeah, it's interesting to see uh, how Hunted tries to deal with the uh, Headhunters. Mm -hmm. Like we saw some of that in the previous matchup that you just mentioned, where the Dark Ranger second can come into play, and then there's going to be different power spikes for uh, both races. Happy Micro, though. Like, I mean, that last game, obviously, I have my own thoughts about Human against Hunted, but that his Micro in the fight and decision making is just insane. I do think he butchered the entire start, which makes it even crazier that he still won after that. Because his start was just so bad, like literally one of the worst possible. There was Quick Tech, Force Talk. I mean, I know we're not supposed to talk about last game, but well, I guess we're, okay. we're talking about Happy here. Like, even if he gets a bad start somehow, he finds a way. Like, his macro in the big fights is what saves him sometimes. And that might be the same thing here against Soin. You know, like facing Headhunters is difficult, but he's always going to know to target the right units. He's so good at dodging some of the ensnares that are going to be thrown. You talked about it, Roddy, like you faced that in the past. Yeah. And that's what makes him so, so scary. So I am on a four-day journey to make you love me. So if you want to talk about the Undead vs. Human while we're getting ready for an Orc vs. Undead, I'll let you talk about it all series long. <laughs> we do, however, got to take a look at the head to head between Happy and Soin. And Neo, let me know if something stands out for you. Yeah, Happy has defeated him uh, before. I guess it was online tournament. Soin is definitely the underdog when we look at something like ELO and also all-time achievements and stuff like that. So Happy is the big favorite in Group D. He's the big favorite in this matchup. If Soin takes the map here, it's already great. If he takes two, that's a huge upset. It was really funny what uh, Remo, while you guys were casting, was actually talking to Soin backstage. He's like, hey, Soin, who do you want to play? And he's like, suck. And Remo's like, who do you think is going to win? He's like, happy. <laughs> I was like, great interaction, <laughs> Remo. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite moments of the last few days. I'm really excited to see some of Happy's magic. But for the people who don't watch Warcraft 3 all the time, Todd, what can we expect from Happy in this matchup? I think uh, he likes to go fast Death Knight into Fiends, and then usually against Senators. He'll play uh, Dark Ranger second very often. And then what he's really good at is judging when to fight and when to play a little slower. You know, once he has Lich with Orb, he's like, all right, let's fight. If you want to, he'll get 50 supply, creep quite a bit and then just try and take good fights on the map. The higher level the Undead gets, the scarier they get. Um, of course, that's also true for Orc, but once Happy gets DK5, like, anything's possible, really, at this point. Yeah, the heroes will be the deciding factor in the long run. We have seen this before in Exort vs. Hitman, where this was crazy fights, <laughs> constantly. And I want to see this magic a little bit recreated here, but Soin might be a little more creative. He has a filled toolbox. He can be off meta strategies, bloodlusted stuff. I'm up for that. I'm up for it as well. We are still waiting for the map picks and bands to come in, but we are going to already do our official predictions over here. Nobody's keeping track other than yours truly. I'm doing pretty good, by the way. Take that, Mr. Prophet. <laughs> and I'll kick things off. I say 2-0 for Happy. Neo? Oh, wow. Doing the real bold hot prediction, take. right? Hot, hot, hot take over here. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I think um, the people of the internet uh, are right and Happy is struggling here a bit and is losing one map. So 2-1 Happy. Okay, Todd? I mean, I have to disagree with both of you, even though it's I'm being a kamikaze here. I'm going to still throw in two. He's going to get some great items and somehow pull through. But then and, then, and then I'll be interviewing Happy because you'll still win. <laughs> but that actually means that there is a chance you'll see another Undead versus Human later today. Can your poor heart take that? 
happy to zero. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, guys. Those were our predictions. Obviously, we are kind of curious to see what you guys decided at home. And I believe that's pretty much good to go as well. So Twitch chat, how badly do you guys think Happy is going to win? We saw 83%, I believe, for the first mm -hmm. series. That was pretty rough. It is 79%. So apparently more people believe in Org than in Human Dot. Yeah, what a shocker. I mean, historically, Orc versus Undead, right, when in the in the golden age, around the 2010s, Orc was very heavily favored against Undead, and I think that's still sticking the back of the head of a lot of people, but I'm not too sure if that's that true anymore. Definitely not as much as in the 2010s. No, I think the map will kind of help a little Yo. bit like as well. I mean, basically a fountain map guaranteed. All right, well, I do believe that we have our map vetoes coming in. I'm actually kind of curious to see if we see uh, shallow graves once more, or if we're going to keep things a little bit more simple. That should be coming up any moment. I'm excited, guys. I haven't seen Undead versus Orc being controlled by Happy in a little while, and I do still have nightmares of every end snare I threw. Just like my hopes and dreams, they never connected. <laughs> <laughs> what was the meta back then? Uh, I played Farsi, Eternal Chief, and he played Dead Night Fiends. And at first it was going well for me until... But two Beast Theories? Or? Oh, I did two Beast Theories, though. That <laughs> may not have been the meta, but that was definitely my meta. All right, we're getting rid of Autumn Leaves, Echo Isle, Last Refuge, and Concilio. And that does mean that we have the chance to see Shallow Graves if it's the second map. Did Happy pick it? Come on, Happy. No. Give it to us. No, no nobody Happy. Happy lives on Northern Isles, man. He has a lot of property on that map. I want to say Soen might be a little bit underestimated here in the regional finals of DreamHack that we had in March. Mm -hmm. He definitely overperformed, and if he's preparing well, and if he has the time, and if he's a little lucky, he can go for big runs every now and then. It doesn't happen too constantly, but if he's feeling great, he definitely has a shot to make it big here. I mean, Korea has a rich history with phenomenal Orc play. I start any final thoughts real quick before I throw it to the casters? Yeah, to me, the big story here is the importance of first place, as always. You want to dodge all the other guys that finish first, which are usually the big dogs. And also, happy supposed weakness against Orc. Is it a myth? Is it for real? We're about to find out. We are indeed about to find out. I believe our casters are ready. So Remo and Carson have a lot of fun with this lovely Undead vs. Orc. As a challenger finally approached for Happy, it doesn't seem likely, but if anyone's going to do it, I think it's going to be an Orc player, and this could be just an appetizer potentially for maybe focus later on if Happy continues to dominate. What do you think about this matchup? I love this matchup. Yep. Walk versus Under, as the panel said, was in the past extremely imbalanced a long time ago. Uh, to this day, still can be tricky. The Headhunters, as we all know, looking really good in this patch, but uh, it's very, very entertaining. It's going to be tier 3 on both sides almost all the time. It's going to be a high level, crazy hero action in the late stages. And this normally makes for fireworks. The early game is probably going to be a little bit more measured. We're going to be seeing some creeping, but once tier 3 rolls around, that's when things usually really kick off and you know i think it's relevant to talk also about the early days you know the 2010s and before shadow hunter blade master uh raiders and snare orb of lightning all that that's what was the bane of the undeads back then but nowadays it's very different with the fastier meta being the thing or is it when happy is your opponent yeah it's definitely going to be difficult and you know for the first map tide hunters this is a very good fastier map it's also been just a very good map for the quality of games as well we remember exler gets hitman on this map so there's heavy creeping a lot of fights over sort of the bottom south side of the map because there's so many nice consumables down there the red camp down there so i think this is going to be a great map to start us off and we're going to see just how on point soen is i don't think he was too challenged by cruncher from what i saw of that series so Maybe he's a little bit warmed up, but he's got his work cut out for him, absolutely. One thing I was wondering that we mentioned briefly uh, before we came on was Blade Master. Is there a exactly. potential here for Selen? Exactly. The thing is we almost never see Blade in this matchup anymore nowadays because it has a big downside, a big weakness, which is if you play Blade into a Crypt Lord fast expansion, it is extremely hard, if not impossible, to make that work. Right. Hitman has done it, but it's not going to favor you by any stretch of the imagination. The thing is... You know, uh, so you have to play safe, to be playing safe, uh, to let me rephrase, you want to be playing fast the Headhunters. But the thing is, Happy, as the only undead in the whole world, pretty much, will never play Crypt Lord first yes. in this matchup, or for the last year, never will anyways. You know what's coming. It's going to be the Ted Fiend build, which is the most reliable, the most uh, uh, versatile and uh, best style for the late game. That's always what Happy's going to be banking on, that he 
is not going to be taking chances and that he's going to be play going to be playing what's reliable indeed and so Soren is going to be knowing what's coming so he has two different options available at his disposal here for these maps exactly as you said blade master or fastier he can choose where this matchup is supposed to go yeah, for sure. And I think there's pretty much only one orc in the world currently that might not mix Blade in if they play against Happy, and that's probably Focus. Yeah. I think Lin, Fly, Hitman, and Soen all mix Blade in when they're guaranteed to play against the Ted Fiend's opener. And as you pointed out, the only undead player that you're guaranteed that is Happy. Everyone else, 1 2 0. Exler, they all mix in the Crippler. That's why we saw Hitman playing the Farseer Headers every game against Exler, because he doesn't know if there's going to be the Crippler or the Death Knight. Whereas here, we can definitely see that potential. Probably not on Tide Hunters. I'd have to say it's probably going to be a Farseer to stir us off. But maybe later on on the other maps, we could definitely see a Blade. Yeah, I certainly agree. We do have, if we go to map three, uh, the decision on Shallow Grave, which is the least uh, uh, discovered map yes. so far. And that's the one thing that really made us both think, right? Like Autumn Leaves being vetoed by Soen, that's pretty weird. Because yeah. normally that's supposed to be a very good Farseer map. But here, him getting rid of that, does that perhaps tip his hand, showing to us that he wants to rather play Blade Master? Um, recently, I've been seeing a lot of fast year from him, but also before the whole fast year craze rolled around, I have seen plenty of games, in fact, ladder games from him against Happy, where he was successful with a Blade. Right. It's a very different kind of game. The Blade Master, in fact, oftentimes seems like the complete opposite, the way it works out st strategy-wise, where the Farseer can be really oppressive early on. The Blade Master really can't. He's trying to be a little bit annoying while still getting his own progress, but it's the late game that is unbelievably strong with a Blade Master triple hero style. Whereas against Farseer, I would go so far as to say the Undead will be favored in the super late game. For sure, yeah. And it's, it's worth noting that it's very difficult to sort of play both styles consistently, I think. They're polar opposites, playing the Blade and playing the Farseer. Completely different army compositions, completely yeah. different order of heroes a lot of the time. Torn Chieftain second with the Farseer, Shadowhunter second with the Blade Master. So it's totally different if you're not practicing and in shape with both openers, if you are the Orc player here, similar to an Undead that has to play Crypt Lord yep. and Death Knight. You're going to have to practice both, and maybe he hasn't practiced a ton. So we'll, we'll see very soon, though. And I think we're about ready here, guys. We're resolving some issues, but now we should be good to go. First place decision match here in Group D. In the top left, in the yellow, playing for Korea and the Orcish Horde is Soen. And in the bottom right, the Emperor, the Destroyer, the Killer, the Stone Cold Killer, if you will, it's Happy. All right, we'll have to keep an eye on if there's a war mill or not, and then we'll have to keep an eye on will there be a Farsi or not. But as I said, I think it'll probably be a Farsi on this map, and we haven't seen a barracks quite yet, so I think it'll be the Farsi. There we are. Yeah, and indeed, the hero choice mostly has to do with how well you're going to be able to creep. Um, Farsi, of course, is going to be played with headhunters, whereas the blade master would be crept played with grunts. Mm -hmm. There's still quite a few creeps with medium armor on this map, which could make one think that, you know, grunts work out well. Um, but for some reason, we still see Farseer most of the time, right? Is there, uh, like, what's the reasons beyond that why we see so much Farseer here? I think it's, you have a lot of strong, quick level 2 creep routes that don't necessarily give you good blade items. You can go for the orange to the north of Soen's base if you want to get some blade items, but you tend to be a little bit slow on the map. Whereas if you go Farseer and you go for both the turtle green camps that we were just seeing on our map there, you get the immediate level two, and then you can pressure the Death Knight quite easily with the Chain Lightning, with the Wolves. And normally by that timing, you can actually be level two against level one, which is always great. It, once Happy gets level two on his Death Knight, he'll have the slight advantage, but it all comes down to the mana count, the health count. So level two versus level two is not always going to be favoring Happy, but uh, we'll have to see if Soen even creeps or if he goes aggressive right away. There's plenty of options, but I think level two is probably the best one for Soen. Happy, very unlucky, RNG-wise. The critter started into the green camp, so he can't really slay it right now with the Acolyte, which is supposed to be the plan. That's rough. That's real rough. The critter standing behind the creeps. Acolyte now going in. All right, he's still going to commit to it. I was thinking for a moment if perhaps he wants to pull out the camp with the Acolyte, but no, just wants to creep it as quickly as he can. When Exlord played here against Hitman, he didn't go for this creep route. Yeah. He went for the ghoul creep, like one ghoul added to the creep and going for the orange right away. My feeling is always the DK struggles the most when he's stuck on level one. Mm -hmm. So some orcs like to be very aggressive against the undead. Here, Soen fits in one camp, 
and then runs over with the Farseer, thinking to be in time, but he's not really, and happy, I think, so far, enjoying this early game, not being pressured too much yet. Yeah, sometimes what we'll see from Orc players, if that turtle gets stolen, they'll just go to the Murloc to the left of Happy's base and still get their level 2 there, but Snowen seems to be playing a little bit aggressive. Finds the Acolyte, gonna pressure it a little bit, needs to scrape together a few kills on Skeletons and maybe that Acolyte itself to get the level 2. Happy, 1.6 currently, not the item luck that we are used to seeing from Happy so far. Yeah, those slippers will be appreciated on the Dark Ranger, which should always be the second hero choice. Oh, and that Acolyte actually gets killed. That is relevant. Every bit of experience here, very valuable in the early game. The power jump from 1 to 2 is immense, especially for the DK, but also the av availability of Chain Lightning can make a big difference. Happy right now, as there is no Chain Lightning, has a much easier time securing these last hits through the coil. Gonna get this last hit. Oh, oh the oh. Farseer has the opening. Wait, Happy! Big mistake by Happy. He didn't finish the creep. And now oh you can God. get it through Chain Lightning, but this one does go to Happy. Item to him as well as the Circlet. Inventory is starting to look good for Happy, but that is an early game mistake after, you could argue, an early game mistake as well against Sock on map 2. Right, yeah. And that Chain Lightning, it's always a bummer to waste the mana, but the coil timing was perfect from Happy. Yeah, it just proves how good Happy is that he makes a mistake like that, and we're like, oh my god, how is that even possible? But uh, yes, yeah, so the not in a terrible position by any measure here. The Headhunters are very, very safe. I'm surprised he's been just so passive with the Headhunters, but now he's moving over to the Marketplace, which I think is an excellent creep route. Yes. He can even do one of the Murlocs after, and that'll be level 3. Maybe even he could just creep the entirety of the, the Marketplace and get level 3. I think consumables, is in this matchup specifically, are hugely impactful, right? especially for the Torn Chieftain. Where the Torn Chieftain has a mana potion or a heal potion to work with is going to make a huge difference. Scroll the Beast can also be really good for Headhunters, but honestly, I think you rather want to have those mana slash HP items for the TC later on. But this is a fast level 3 for the fast here, and this is what typically happens in this matchup. The Orc creeps faster and gets the level up first to 3. Yeah, the Dark Ranger will be online pretty soon, if not right now. So that might be able to push back the Headhunters. But Soen has been playing very, very safe with the Headhunters. He's taking a tiny bit of damage, but he's going to have Troll Regen online soon. There's the Dark Ranger. But just as we see that hero pop out of the tavern, the Headhunters go back to meet up with soon-to-be the Torn Chieftain coming out of the altar back at Soen's base. The Farseer is going to keep pressuring, but no salves, of course. So if he takes any more damage, if he eats a coil here and there, he's going to have to go back home. This matchup, of course, has been on many people's minds uh, ever since the changes, how to approach it, how to uh, perfect it. I had a very interesting conversation a couple of days ago with Hitman when we were talking about how to, you know, uh, especially creep, how to play aggressively and uh, how to, you know, manage between ag aggression and passivity. And he said what really uh, sets 1 to 0 apart, who he views to be the best, is that he scouts very well and will be ready to play aggressive and punish greedy creeping if it occurs, whereas Happy will always play super safe and not be concerned with being aggressive until he finally has tier 3. And I think he had a really great point there. Happy's weakness has always been this matchup, and he has been criticized for being a bit too passive in the early game. The Farseer, by the way, oh. didn't pay enough attention to it at all. That's a big mistake by Sony. He was creeping a green camp in the meantime, which yeah. shouldn't require that much effort. And that TP is gone for a long time. Yeah, very weird. Yeah, I think the green camp, you nailed that on the head right there. Like, why would you need to pay so much attention to that camp? You could just A, move into it, and you'll kill it. But still a lot of time bought, I suppose, with the Farseer. Now he can heal up, get more mana, and he's right back at it. Happy a little bit predictable with that creep, but he does get the whole camp. Still level 2. 2.7. And now Happy may be going to do that orange that he's close to with the Knolls, but the TC's already power creeping. And that's, of course, the strength of the Farseer. You can solo harass the opponent and force them to play passively and creep safely across the map. Whereas the DK can, of course, never do that because then the Fiends are too exposed, the Farseer finds the kills, and it's going to be a hugely Orc-favoring trade. So uh, especially the early game and mid game does favor the Orc quite a bit, but the late game, that is where the Undead can turn it all around. The goal here for Happy will be to not fall too far behind until he finally has 50 to 60 supply. Yeah, so I'm going for the red camp in the meantime, continuing to pressure. Happy still struggling to get that level 3 and struggling to get you know, really good items. Those slippers and the uh, circlet are all right, but nothing much more. Maybe he can get something nice. Here, Pendant of Energy would be the nuts, which is, of course, what Soen already got. Uh-oh, uh-oh! He does get the coil. The item's still on the ground, but will be picked up by the Dark Ranger, and it is a pendant on both sides. Did he steal the last thing with a wolf? He's 3.3 .3 now. 
Yeah, he should have been level. Happy should have been level three off that. Oh my god. I think he did. That was yeah. the second last hit from this camp as well. He got one earlier. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. And it's taking Happy forever. Another big power spike for the Undead here is level three Dark Ranger. Level two Black Arrow against Headhunters or Berserkers is very, very strong, but at the moment he's still far away from that. Happy looking perhaps for a surround, forced a speed scroll out of the orc. This is the aggressive move that Happy is not known for. Trying to close that surround doesn't quite manage to. But even forcing just one charge of Wand of the Wind is kind of a big deal. That's a yep. super high impact item in the late game fights. Yeah, Raider took a lot of damage, TC especially took a lot of damage, so someone had oh. to get out of there, and there was Wait. no town portal. He played without Beast Fury, right? Oh, no, okay, no. Yeah. Just that First Raider took a lot of damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had to try to listen, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, couldn't try to uh, cover the retreat there with the ensnare. TC got level 3, though, and we have quite the sizable experience lead for Soen as the sort of the norm in this match. Absolutely, yeah. The creeping was very, very fast. The TP was forced earlier because the creeping was so fast, but still, all is well that, all is well that ends well. And a consumable for Happy is Scroll the Beast as well, so both sides have it, but it seems like Soen sold his. I find that kind of interesting. He could definitely use it in a fight. And now Soen is looking for the opening. He knows the Lich isn't there yet. Happy TP's out. Gonna lose one Fiend. Wow. Tried to get the Raider. Didn't quite manage to. That Raider just barely getting away. One Claws on the Dark Ranger would have made the difference. And that is uh, Soen, I think, for the first time taking a bit of a lead this game. That Fiend loss is relevant. Happy's about to hit a power spike. He's going to have Burrow, he's going to have Destroform, and he's going to have Lich with Orb. So he may have the strength to take the second consumable camp there. He can perhaps get the greater mana that he's been looking for the entire game surrounding the Gargantuan, and he's going to go for that consumable. So and realizes this power spike is coming, so he's just going to creep passively himself, take the last camp on the bottom side of the map, and then he's going to take a fight. But the Shadow Hunter, is it with the main army yet? It has to be, right? Yeah, there it is. So both players seemingly ready to fight. Early Destroyer more from Happy, something we didn't see too much by him lately. Very important to position, position that well. Raider running forward. Speaking of positioning, that Raider completely out of position, but got the Ensnare on the DK. No Use Illusions to block the TC. Are you kidding me? TC can't connect for the Storm. That was a sick move. Shadow Hunter gets nuked in the meantime. Happy with a hell of a play, completely outplaying Soen in this engagement. Going for the Lich now next, but there's no Hex on the wind. However, one of the wind dispels it. Coil flies. Doesn't quite get it. Farseer gets the kill. The Shadow Hunter on the bench now along with the Lich. Coil flies. Of course, the TP was gone. The mistakes for Soen mounting and happy with that perhaps getting the win here. The TC, the strongest hero still on the field, but the only one left and doesn't have mana anymore. Dark Ranger finally level three and happy. That was incredible. With the illusions, keeping his DK safe and so on, getting a bit too thirsty, a bit too greedy, gives away the lead and the Emperor will punish him right away. Didn't we talk about that earlier? Nobody punishes you as heavily as Happy does. Oh my god, absolutely the play of the tournament right there. That was ridiculous. Someone saw the opening and it was a great opening. A lot of players would have gone for that play. No TP, no way to save the Death Knight. And he goes for it, but the illusion block preemptively. Happy just sees into the future every second of every game. And the Dark Ranger gets level 3, gets tons of kills, and Happy in the driver's seat when I thought it was going very well before that for Soen. Still opportunity, they're both going to creep the, the remnants of what's left on the map, but uh, the hero levels are starting to get up to that point. The level 3 Dark Ranger, as you mentioned earlier, a massive upgrade for Happy. And he's coming forward now, going to get the potion of vulnerability from the shop, and maybe he's ready to fight yet again. That was sick, dude. I see a lot of happy games, but I've never yeah, seen that before. Yeah. Running in with the Raider wasn't looking. The next mistake by Soen. You can't afford to make these. He's going for Hail Mary plays. Now he's going for the hero kills. That's a big stomp. The DK getting affected, trying to transfer an item. The Lich is trying to reach him. It's dead. But he can't. Good block this time also by Soen. Happy has lots of gold. Can try to go for a tavern res. That was a very nice play indeed. TC trying to run away. Lots of experience for the Orc as well. And happy with the first mistake, perhaps, this game after that trapper. Good play by Soen. TZ now 4.7. That level 5 can be half a win condition for the Orc. All right, DK back. The TC very much out of position, but Happy doesn't go for it. Um, you know, he maybe could have gone down and tried to get a nuke, but there's a heal scroll, and now Happy's just going to run up, try to get some more creeping done 
Maybe a little over eager there to fight without a town portal with the potion of vulnerability. Not on the right hero, I think, there. And now he's going to creep. This is really good from Happy, though. Because he realizes he's going to be fighting soon, he's just creeping a small camp and, importantly, getting these skeletons yep. ready for the yep. next engagement. So he goes to the middle and was checking for an invul potion. He doesn't have one. This TC not protect protected through invul potion. And Happy, he so expects this creepjack to be coming in, perhaps. Catches the statue, but bad angle of engage. This is a really narrow choke. Part of the army is still lagging behind. And the big problem for Soen, he lost the Shadow Hunter. He still doesn't have Heal Wave, only Hex. Yeah, one more kill. The Coil Nova on the Torrent Chieftain is already very, very low. The Heal Scroll might have to be used just for the one hero. Stomp is good. Chain Lightning is good. There's no Coil Scroll. The Beast is used. The statues are in the perfect position. Now Burrow on the Fiends to try to save them. The Torrent Chieftain is oh so low, but there is Heal Wave now. Soen finds a decent angle there, but look at the Skeletons. Look at the Ghouls. A ton of normal damage, and Soen retreating, but he's going to lose a ton in the retreat. Yeah, I'm waiting for the Nova, the Lich perhaps out of range at the moment. TC got no experience there, can't really re-engage, but he's trying to. The DK is still exposed, but he's got the Invul Potion, right? There's no way he can get this DK. So in with the wrong read, it was impossible to find this hero kill. Loses the TC and more units, and probably map one. Happy just with the insane micro. Time and time and again, surround. and now the surround to finish things off. So and trying to chain lightning his way out of it, but I think this is going to be 1-0 for the Emperor. Lich level 3, and GG is called for game 1. Happy gets the comeback. As we've seen so many times before, he falls behind the early game, which just seems to be the nature of the matchup at the moment, if it's fast here headhunter play. But he comes back in the late game. So in with a couple of wrong reads, also throwing away a couple of raiders here and there, but the big one was trying to go for the hero kill DK with perhaps the sickest save I've ever seen. Yep. Double Wand of Illusion to block away the TC. And that was intentional, 100%. It was Micron those Illusions. Yes. It was visible. That's totally Sick. crazy. I that have one question sick. for you. Does it, When you pop the Illusion, does it go in front of your yeah. hero that is facing? So he faces towards the TC, double charge of Illusion, it goes for it. Here we're going to see that play back. Let's watch. Okay, he preemptively does it. You see, he before did it before the, the TC. Even. Oh my god, Happy. He knew it was coming. Absolutely oh ridiculous. Kills the Shadow Hunter with a silence as well, so there's not another Hex before he dies. Gets the DK out of danger, and then just, he does lose the Lich. But look at this Coil, almost lands. The Devour, Coil, one second, barely not even a second away. Yeah. Kills the Farseer, such a crazy sequence for Happy, proving why he's the greatest player in the world potentially right now. And this was the one crucial mistake where the DK was too far forward. If he's more conservative with the DK positioning, he can take that fight pretty easily. But so in there finds the opening. He looked for more hero kills beyond that, but Happy this time was cautious and ready. He had the Invo Potion on the Death Knight. He knew uh, so in especially with not having the Invo Potion himself, would have a tough time. Invo's in this matchup, extremely important. And on this map, Tidehunter's only one shop, so this is going to be the most important late game purchase. On map two, this again will be relevant, because Northern Isle is also only one shop. So in this is going to bite him, maybe. He definitely had a lead this game, and he kind of threw it away. Absolutely, and we'll see how he does in map two. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Northern Isles.
The DreamHack Warcraft Free Championship is brought to you by Norton Gaming and Coinbase. And we're back with Group D winner bracket finals. Happy up 1-0, an absolutely ridiculous performance with a couple of mistakes from both sides, but really with a highlight play to end all highlight plays. That was, I don't think we're going to stop talking about that for the rest of the week here. Yeah, never seen that before. Yeah. been watching this game for 15 years. That was amazing. Like, to have the presence of mind before the Hex comes in. Oof, still kind of shaking from that one. So when he tried hard with the hero kills, sometimes it worked. It's often times also a bit of a sign of desperation when you're trying to go for the hero kill. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's also the easiest way to win a game against an inferior opponent, but it's certainly not what Happy should be considered as. The big reason why he got ahead on map one was that the fast here got level three so fast. And uh, map two, spoiler alert, is going to be Northern Isles. Worries me a bit for Soen, because here the level three creep route, not so clear cut for the fast here at Hunters, and might be a lot harder to achieve at the time he wants. Yeah, the only real way you can get level 3 in the early game is if you trade level 3s, which I think is Happy's going to be totally fine with. He's yeah. going to have a ton of mana on the DK level 3 himself, and then he's going to be able to have that map control at tier 2 with the Dark Range and the level 2 call to get the middle camps. So we'll see how it plays out. Maybe a Blade Master, but I might be saying that too often, might be cursing it. We're probably going to get the Farseer again, but we'll find it all out here on Northern Isles. Map 2, starting us off in the bottom left. Can Soen do it? Here he is. Soen. All bright, the Emperor, apparently also the master of highlights from Russia for the undead, the last hope is happy. Okay, all right. Let's see, these, these Orc vs. Undeads, man, they have not disappointed so far. I'm starting to like this matchup more and more, at least watching it. At least watching it's very fun. We'll see. The War Mill coming in for Soen. So going to be a similar game to last, but I think that level 3 um, is going to be the difficult side of it. Absolutely. That's going to be... Like, the creep route will be interesting for Soen. I think for Happy, it'll be pretty cut and dry. He's going to go for that green camp into the Murloc, and then he's going to play probably reactively based on what Soen's doing. But for Soen, he can get his own level 2. And then from there, it will really be deciding, like, how is he going to innovate this? What is he going to do differently? Because he's going to need to pull something out. Yeah, there's a pretty good uh, early game plan, creep route for the Orc available here. Going for the two greens right away with like Wolves and uh, Headhunters and stuff, and then run across the map, perhaps even with a Grunt, run across the map and then compete the second green camp and prevent level two for the DK. And as I don't tire of saying, that aura makes all the difference in the world. If you can manage to force the DK to stay on level one, you're going to have a great time. So I also, there's also space for Happy here to perhaps innovate. Can he somehow find the timing to manage to get to, that, to get to that level two before the Farseer can do anything about it. And maybe the Scout Acolyte is, you know, part of that equation. Like, just, you don't think much of it, that nine to 10 damage, but in this high level play, it counts for every second, you know, every, every second matters here. So this Acolyte will help with creeping. Maybe even invest two coils on the first camp. It might be worth it. Absolutely, yeah. And the critter positioning is very good this time around. It kind of always is on Northern Isles. And Happy is kind of the Laliat of undead creeping. He really is so efficient, especially his movement from camp to camp in the late mid game is excellent. And for now, it's no different. He's going to get everything perfectly on time. Stone is going for his big Murloc, and then he runs straight over. What he's attempting to do, I think, is steal Happy's little Murloc before he yeah. gets there. But I don't know if that timing works just ever. Yeah, I think Happy can just go to the green right now with the DK already. But he finishes the rest of the camp, and yeah, Farseer won't be able to steal this one before the DK arrives, or at least shouldn't. Of course, right now, the DK still has the last hit advantage. Perhaps slight mistake by Happy. If he loses this last hit, it's due to him being there late with the Death Knight, but no, he is not too late. And this should be an easy last hit for Happy in deep. Whew, it was a bit close, but he times it well with the right click, and now only one creep away from the level up, and so on. He did not creep that level two, so there's nothing really can do about this. Only hope to drain more coils. Does manage to do that. Farseer flirting with us around, but Happy gets level two fast against level one Farseer, and this is already a better early game than it was on TH. Yeah, this is very, very good from Happy. I think a slight 
mistake there in the creep route from Snowen, that never works. It really doesn't. Even if you run straight over with the Farseer, you still don't hit that timing. You still cannot get one of those Murlocs. Sometimes you can get the Huntsman if the Undead messes up, but Happy's not messing up at all. He's now creeping again aggressively, but yeah. this is just going to be a dead headhunter. Maybe even two. The aura's online. There's coils. Maybe he practiced against Undeads who don't creep with the Acolyte. Right. And then maybe it works. But here it sure didn't. And now with the aura, you can chase very effectively. That one headhunter is certainly dead. Well, oh, block. trying to get him front to block. Maybe that can work out. But here again, the aura. Carson, the aura! It's okay. making all the difference. That's yeah, so a one headhunter. But Soen will secure at least his own level two here, killing the Acolyte, killing some skeletons. Fiend going to be pressured a bit, and there's no coil currently. Another headhunter getting quite low. Actually, two getting quite low, and that coil is going to come online, not to save the Fiend, but maybe to snag another kill. And this is excellent. Although we did see Hitman lose four headhunters, a grunt in the early game, and still come back with that tier three power spike. So this isn't the end of the world, but it's definitely a big advantage for Happy. Yeah, this Fosse Headhunter style with Triple Hero also has great comeback potential, even if you're behind, as you pointed out. That goes visible by Hitman against X-Lord. The claws, of course, for Happy were great. Even the gauntlets in this early game really good. The Lightning Shield, the worst drop, however. You know, the Dark Ranger oh, comes no. in and the Headhunter gets in. Yeah, this will be the third one to fall. Soen falling apart on Northern Isles. A lot of damage. Can the Wolf get in front? He tries to re-summon. That's a lot of damage. Is there enough mana for a Chain Lightning? Lightning the Shield light as well. Oh my god, oh another my Headhunter. God. So well done from Happy. My, I don't think he's going to lose anything either. He's getting so many kills. And he's staying in range for the aura, for the move speed, for the fiend, Jesus. but not taking damage on the DK. This Lock is, to meme a bit, what attack. peak performance looks like. But, uh, well, that's not a joke. That's just the truth. And the Dark Ranger can just keep on creeping. She's got skellies right there. She can t steal the Toastgar away right now as the DK gets safely back into the main. There should be a Chain Lightning. There's a Coil in five mana. Yeah, he's going to get this fiend. Nicely done. Happy being pressured quite a bit, but he can always buy a potion if he really needs to. I love that Happy first with the Fiend blocked the lower Fiend, and then he moved the direction and blocked so the DK could get away. He blocked with one Fiend for two different paths. Ridiculous. Nice deny, but as you pointed out, Dark Ranger oh already going to be, what, was this 2.4? 2.5 with a greater mana in the slippers. The nuts for these two camps. And level 3 is almost online already. Yeah, on TH it wasn't the best consumables for Happy. It was one of mana stealing, and I don't know if we got something else, but here it is, the big mana. Scroll the beast. Once again, scroll the beast, that's right. Wow, what a sick early game. That is normally a camp that's going to be guaranteed for the TC, but not this game. And I want to echo what I said earlier. These consumables are such a big difference makers. Yep. Dif big difference maker. If the TC heads into a fight without mana potion and with, without a heal potion, and in the worst case, without invul potion, it's going to be a completely different story. It almost feels like a different hero. TC is extremely strong. In my opinion, as you guys saw from the tier list, <laughs> the strongest hero in the game. But he does need items, especially consumables. Absolutely, and we saw that being the difference maker on tight items as well. Not being able to save that TC at the end. No, nothing for more stomps, nothing to heal him up or make him invulnerable. It was very, very difficult. Just had that heal scroll. He's going to get, hopefully for Stone's sake, a pendant of energy here. They both got one last game. He's going to at least get that 2.4, I believe, but happy. Continues to creep, continues to get a ton of skeletons, and then... He's even got his second consumable to go for if he de desires. And now the middle seemingly should be going to Happy. Dark Ranger pretty strong with the skeletons. Once the first statue is out, that's when Happy really is going to feel comfortable here on Tier 2. But so in with a ridiculously fast Tier 3, so he's going to have a very clear third hero advantage for a while. No Chain Lightning available. To get this last hit, Happy gonna coil just to guarantee it. Gets Talisman of Evasion. Not the greatest, of course, but again, Hero Focus on the Death Knight is seemingly a possibility. And he's just trying to delay, but without the level 2 Wolves, it's very difficult for someone to do much of anything. Torn Chieftain actually gonna get the Marketplace. Maybe Wand of the Wind again. Mana Stone, Hell Stone, all very good. Even Ankh, Heal Wards. Book of the Dead is the only bad item, actually, unfortunately for Sullen. Gonna use it right away to creep. He knows Destroyers will be coming in, trying to get value out of it right now. Doesn't have heal cells anymore. It seems like a bit of a mistake in his macro, if you want to call it that, because now he certainly can't contest at all. He has to run back to the main, get the heal cells, and only then can he continue to creep. He's going to lose the TP again. Oh, 
a coil. Very nicely done. Did have to burn the greater mana for it, but obviously worth it. This is exactly what happened on Tires. The TC and the Raider are very low. Have to go back for ourselves. The Farseer gets forced to TP at the yeah. same time by a little bit of a sloppy movement. And then Happy gets an aggressive camp, but someone ready to fight. He's going to have all the Tier 3 kicking in right now. Happy five seconds off. Then the Lich can be started. Then the Orb Destroyer form going to be on the way. Even plus one to boot. So Happy's going to be ready to fight, but he's maybe 50, 60 seconds out currently. You know, it's a simple cast or cop out thing to say, mm. but I think it's true here. Someone just isn't playing clean enough. Right. The early game creep route didn't work out. Not well studied enough. The movement, the faster level up timing, the headhunter losses, it's too many mistakes that are just going to kill you against Happy. Someone is really far behind right now. We're even in supply, but don't let that fool you. And flute, by the way, also for Happy. Why not, right? Red camp does go to Soen. He gets a Helm of Valor, which um, is all right for the TC, I guess, but uh, obviously not great. And he's going to get some more experience, which is what is important. Level 3 in the Torn Chief. There's still no level 3 in that Farseer, which it cannot be underestimated. Those wolves, there's not going to be a lot of destroyers from Happy. Happy, importantly, got the Invul Potion. That means TC can't really fight. There's no Invul to save him. There's no Heal Pot because that one was stolen away. Yep. Possibly by the Tuscar or, of course, Invul. And the Shadowhunter is going to have Hex first, as he always does. Now, the bottom right could possibly all go to Happy. Because of that Invul Potion, mainly, all these big camps that are left might go to the Russian. Potential for Dependent of Energy at last. What Happy is looking for, absolutely. Creepjack kind of coming in, Crystal Ball, not going to be great, reveals the expansion immediately, just in case of that quick, tiny Great Hall, but uh, Orc player is generally too afraid of Happy's strong tier 3 timing to go for that that early, and Snare in the statue going to give vision to so, and is he ready to fight without the Potion of Vulnerability? I really don't think so. Happy nowadays more and more again with one single destroyer, mainly to have something against the Hex. His destroyer control is the best in the world by far. So we're going to try to go in. If the TC gets too close, it's going to get Silence and Nuke, probably. Silence comes in. TC can't break out of it. Nova oh, right no. clicks. TC about to fall. Has to run out. Didn't get off a single one of his stomps. He does survive with a heal scroll, but he can't enter again into this fight. Going for the Kodo right after Fiend returns. And Happy is completely destroying this fight, as we we're expecting. Because of the Invul Potion being on Happy's side, it changes everything. He gets the kill there, level 4 on the DK. And this fight was a complete disaster for Soen. We kind of saw it coming, but also understandable. Like, Soen can't just say, whatever, you're stronger. Creep the whole rest of the map. You have to kind of contest those camps. Otherwise, you're going to be too far behind. The potion finally goes to Soen, but just when he's not strong enough to fight. If he had it before, obviously, he would have been able to take that because he would have gotten the stomp, even broken the silence and gotten that money stomp. But now it's all happy. He's going to get this bottom right red, and then he's got two more camps close by to creep. That could even be... Like Lich level 3, if he wanted. He's got 4-4 four, four on the DK Dark Ranger. That's absurd at this stage in the game. Only 11 minutes. That is outrageous. How much of the map has he gotten? It seems like he's gotten, like, what, 70%, 65% of the map so far? Yeah, and thinking especially about this opening creep route, this looks more and more like a good undead map once again. Gonna have to remember that for my ladder games. Don't scout with the Acolyte, just creep with the Acolyte. Um, yeah, so on. How can he come back into this one? Low level Shadow Hunter was the problem on map one already. This seems to be the same once more. Happy pulling out the red camp. If he gets this one, he's really gonna fly away in levels. Lich now gets level two. That's a big upgrade as well for that Frost Armor. As it already feels like the only option left for so in his hero kill. He's gonna try it once again. Hex running in and he gets off the stomp. Can he get the kills now? TC in trouble, has the invul, might be forced into it soon, but he doesn't go for the TC. He goes for the Shadow Hunter, he doesn't have, didn't have the Invul Potion. TC forced into it, gets off one more Stomp. That was the last one, perhaps. DK getting surrounded, might be in trouble. Remember, no TP on the Farseer anymore. Coil flies, and he dies again. So in every mistake he makes, he gets punished for. Here we saw the mistake of losing the TP earlier, coming back to bite him. And once more, it's only the TC left standing against Happy with all three heroes, and a thousand gold to make matters worse for the Korean who is for sure going to be dropping to the lower bracket. He really wants that hero kill on the DK, but doesn't get it this time. GG called on map two. It's very clear as the Emperor owns that game and leaves no chance to sell it. Yeah, perfectly done in that last fight from Happy. Like, just 
He didn't give any openings, and every time anything was out of position, even the Kodo towards the tail end of that fight out of position, just dead immediately. Absolutely crazy. So we're going to see what the desk has to say about it. Um, very excited for that, and very excited to see Happy against hopefully more orcs in the future, but for now, we'll send it off to the desk. Well, I believe that Ronald Keaton made a song a long time ago that we say it best when we say nothing at all. But that wouldn't really work for the analysis desk, so we are going to say something about <laughs> it. Happy advances in first place and obviously a very dominant matter. 2-0 in the opening match, 2-0 in the, the upper bracket match here. As he gets out of the group in first place, I am joined by Todd and Neil. Jorn Mello, I felt that first game was somewhat competitive. It was close. There was some potential there for Zoe. Yeah, it did feel like it was up in the air up until a certain point. Like that fight at the bottom was really when uh, Happy was able to show that it was just better with the micro and decision making. Even though he lost his Lich, which is always scary because then you lose the orb that you very importantly need to fight very effectively. But yeah, the micro from both players was incredible, but Happy's micro, as we know, is out of this world. Neo, play of the tournament here, that that night stay with the illusions. Absolutely incredible. Against Happy, you can't just try to go for a hero kill. You have to get the you have to get the hero kill. Like you must be 100 percent sure, otherwise it's gonna tear your head off. And for Soen, he was so good in the winner bracket semifinal. I think Ronan Keating has another song like Life is a roller coaster. <laughs> and man did that series go downhill fast for Soen. You know more songs of him than I do. I just <laughs> like that song that we say the best when we say nothing at all. But well, obviously some beautiful moves by Happy throughout this entire best of three. It's very obvious that the big man is on a mission and his mission is to go all the way but I do want to ask you about game two real quick caster said it was just not clean enough by the orc but it, it goes two ways right like was it not clean enough or was happy just that good he was very very well prepared and so wasn't ready for what to happen there and then if you have a small advantage here that snowball effect especially with happy on the mouse and keyboard is just surreal Yep, surreal it was. And we're going to hear from the big man himself as he is in front of our stage together with the lovely Johan Merlo. So, Todd, take it away. Thank you very much, Kevin. Congratulations, Happy. Uh, with this win, you advance into the quarterfinals. I would love to ask you a little bit about the games. So, first, Tide Hunters. Before the big fight that took place at the bottom of the map, did you think that the game was 50-50 uh, still? Was it all about what was going to happen in that fight? Or did you think you were already ahead and you were you just needed to do good enough in that fight to be able to win? Uh, no, I only realized that I was ahead only when he tried to kill my heroes and they went in my army too far without a teleport and then he lost heroes and only after that I knew I had the lead, not before. When you lost Lich, did you maybe get worried because then you don't have orb to fight or already having killed the Shadow Hunter, you thought he was totally fine and you could just keep trading? Uh, no, that's the point. I knew that he haven't teleported and I knew that I will be able to finish uh, uh, Farseer. And then in game two, uh, Northern Isle, you just got a great start. Do you feel like all your ladder practice and meeting a lot of orcs that go headhunter that just allowed you to reach like a new level against this style? And is, is you having trouble against orc a myth or is it a real thing? It's a real thing. I just think my opponent didn't have quite good early game at all. I had way too big advantage after that. So with this win, you're going to play a second place finisher from another group that's either Focus, Chemiko or Lolayet. Can you talk to me about... I'm sure you've played them in the last few days. How has it been going and what's your level of confidence against each of them? Well, actually, according to rules, it's uh, highest uh, rank. I mean, not just one uh, first place against second place, but it's highest rank by points against lowest rank by points. So I'm not going to play focus, I think. Uh, <laughs> which is good news for me, because I was not doing too well against him, against uh, Chimica or Low Light. I think I have pretty good chances. We'll see. If you look at all the players that have made it as well, like the first place finishers, it's very realistic that you might end up having to play against some of them. So like Hitman and Moon, for example. We're not going to talk about Foggy because you play him enough and we know about that matchup, but Hitman and Moon, how do you think you will fare against them as well? Because I'm sure you've played them and a lot of people will be looking forward to those matches. Well, against Hitman, not sure, because I don't think I'm that good against Orc at all, overall. But against Moon, I think I can show something good. If uh, un unless I'm gonna have like some pretty unli unlikely outcomes, like uh, bad item drop and stuff like that, but I think I can at least try to give a good fight. All right, thank you so much. Congratulations again. We're gonna head to a break, guys. When we come back, it's gonna be the next match. See you guys right after this.